going to do a little bit of an, um, of an examination at um, someone that lives in well, all of our collective unconscious. I uh, call this talk Lectures on Obscure and Probably Uninteresting Topics. This will be called The Hermeneutics of Mr. Belvedere. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Streaks on the China never mattered before. Who cared? When you drop kicked the jacket as you came through the door, no one glared. But sometimes things get turned around and no one spared. All hands look out below, there's a change in the status quo. Gonna need all the help we can get, according to our new arrival. Life is more than mere survival. And we just might live the good life yet. <clears throat> it is perhaps no surprise that the writer of this poem also composed the Cheers and Punky Brewster theme songs and I Believe in Me from Fame. In the following lecture, I propose three hermeneutical perspectives on Mr. Belvedere. First, Belvedere as savior. Second, Belvedere as civilizer. And third, Belvedere as antichrist, the son of destruction. To begin, Mr. Belvedere is a shadowy, if not shady figure, not unlike the ninja. Familiar, yet dark, just beyond our reach, enigmatic, enticing, masculine, yet not. <laughs> In theological terms, it would be called a coincidence of opposites. So, with the metaphysicians and the epistemologists and the shrouded mystics, we ask, who is Mr. Belvedere? <laughs> the sketch is simple enough. In 1985, Mr. Belvedere, an urbane, hermaphroditic English butler, is hired by the Owens, an all-American middle-class family headed by none other than, none other than Bob Euchre. The family's overstretched, busy, profane. They live in Beaver Falls, PA. It's just outside of Pittsburgh. The show runs for six seasons, and although Mr. Belvedere still lives large, if sometimes hibernating in our collective minds, as I've said before, he never was or will be even remotely successful. Not a single episode ever threatened to reach even the exceedingly low bar of a top 30 show, not even with the TGIF time slot. <laughs> It is in the series finale, appropriately, that the height of the Belvedere mystery is thrown at us. In an act that defies all we suspected, Belvedere gets married and moves to, of all places, Africa. <laughs> I propose that few, if any, English butlers of Belvedere caliber have emigrated from somewhere near Pittsburgh to Africa. As if Belvedere's marriage isn't enough for us to handle, there's Africa. Africa. <laughs> Why not England? There was no answer. Then, in a moment of revelation, it clicked. Belvedere as the sitcom Jesus. Belvedere was a crusader all along, such crusading ahead of his time episodes, including the socially conscious AIDS from a blood transfusion episode and the courageous Scoutmaster inappropriate touching episode. <laughs> something we would have suspected more of Belvedere himself. Something I myself suspected at every moment of the show. <laughs> Salvation came near to Beaver Falls, PA. Now it was time for the dark continent. Belvedere, that unlikely and yet so likely savior, that toppler of the status quo, cleaner of dirty China, etc., was out to bring the good life to the drop-kick country of Africa, uh, nation, uh, continent of Africa. Go and make disciples of the nations, said Jesus. No one spared, says Belvedere's theme song. If Belvedere is Redeemer, the son of man, why is he an English butler? Hmm. It smacks of old world British imperialism, of the kind that any crusading 1980s sitcom writer would scorn with the vehemence reserved for the crusades of the in Inquisition. Why would the unwashed masses of Pittsburgh need an English butler to set things right? Returning to the text of the introductory poem, as I hinted previously, Belvedere is the agent of civilization. I would expand on this point, but uh, it is basically self-evident, and point three is much more interesting. My third and final point. Belvedere as Antichrist. As tempted as I am to proclaim Belvedere as Lord, or at least etiquette God, the following five incontrovertible points lead me to believe that he is the angel of darkness. One, the British attempt to civilize people has always been a front for nefarious and diabolical goings on. Two, a familiar title for the Antichrist is Stranger from the East. Three, the devil is a fallen angel. Angels are sexually ambivalent. Belvedere's first name is Lynn. <laughs> Four. Jesus was born in a ship barn. The devil is a gentleman. Belvedere is a china cleaner. Five. In the Family Guy video game, Mr. <laughs> Belvedere is Peter Griffin's nemesis. Peter gets hit on the head throughout the game and constantly thinks that Belvedere is real and has kidnapped his family. 
Peter destroys half of Quahog looking for his family and for revenge on Mr. Belvedere. He follows a spotlight in the sky that has an outline of Belvedere. Lucifer means light bearer, the star that fell from heaven. I could go on, but in the interest of time and decency, I will conclude. Thank you very much.